We all live in the digital world. We all need it to be open and safe. We all want to trust. And to be trusted. We all despise control. And desire freedom. We, we are all, all united. united. Hello, uh, my name is Przemysław Kurczewski. I'm a deputy director of the Polish uh, National Center for Research and Development. Uh, we are an agency which is responsible for distributing um, uh, European funds for innovative pro uh, projects, uh, increasing or developing digital economy in Poland. And I have a pleasure to, to, pr to present a short summary of, uh, of analysis that we did uh, uh, over um, over in the National Center of, uh, of, of uh, Research and Development related to projects that we financed over the last uh, five or six years, starting from 2016. I think it's an interesting uh, data showing uh, what trends are transpiring in Polish digital industry, what projects are being developed by uh, our uh, entrepreneurs, and uh, where the Poland, Poland's uh, competitive edge uh, potentially will be. I will start with a short presentation of the, uh, of the uh, co conclusions of the analysis and then we'll uh, move to our experts uh, who will discuss uh, their point of view on, on Polish uh, future in digital economy. So shortly, um, uh, something about uh, NCBR, National Center for uh, Research and Development. Uh, we're an agency which was created close to 12 years ago. Uh, responsible for distributing European funds and investing those funds or uh, helping our uh, entrepreneurs in uh, developing innovating technologies uh, for the future. Uh, we have uh, distributed close to 60, 60 billion, uh, 66 billion Polish slots uh, in uh, such projects over this period of uh, time. That's approximately 16 billion euro. And uh, what our ambition is for the future is to actually create uh, programs and uh, and uh, support projects which better develop uh, Polish uh, national gross product and are better fit in the, to uh, resolve uh, problems which uh, civilization is encountering right now. For example, we are very much keen on developing technologies related to Green Deal, European Green Deal, and uh, all other digital uh, and uh, artificial technologies which are going to be critical to actually competes in the world uh, as it's coming in, in coming years. Um, what we have done is uh, we have taken the sample population of projects which were financed uh, by NCBR over of this period of time. Over 2,600 projects were analyzed. And uh, out of this, uh, out of this uh, um, sample population, which was analyzed by, by our uh, experts, uh, the following data or interesting conclusions have uh, uh, stemmed. Um, close to 60% of uh, all projects uh, uh, out of this sample top population, uh, um, which was uh, be, which was examined, related to projects uh, worked which worked on digital uh, products uh, within the digital economy. Uh, out of the 60%, 40% related to development of new software. 32% uh, related to um, development of new uh, digital processes and 28% uh, to hardware solutions. Close to 15 billion slots were actually invested in such projects over this period of time. And uh, the interesting part, which was a bit of a surprise to me, was that uh, those projects which were most costly and uh, uh, capex uh, and and actually money involved was the, the largest was were projects related to process change. Uh, it turns out that uh, uh, um, innovations related to processes, which were intended to increase uh, capacities of uh, uh, companies, increasing efficiencies, were most complex because they were transparent in terms of uh, numerous areas which were they were touching a number of personnel which was involved as well as implementation turned out to be the most difficult because in often in a lot of cases these uh, new um, solutions those innovations were applied into living organisms being that uh, they were um, introduced into plants and organizations which uh, were 
um, functional. And uh, of course, this, this uh, had uh, several additional risks related to that. That's why the cost of implementation and development and implementation uh, seemed uh, more significant than it would, to me, appear um, um, uh, on its face. Uh, the interesting, the interesting part, uh, which uh, came out of this these analysis, and we're talking, of course, about projects which were financed by our institution here in Poland, is that there are three areas of dominant technologies which uh, um, were more, more more often than not uh, financed by uh, our, our institution, which is uh, projects related to artificial intelligence, machine learning, blockchain, um, and uh, blockchain here in Poland. Uh, that's actually kind of considered as an en enabler to uh, mostly finance uh, solutions. Um, Internet of Things and, uh, and virtual reality, uh, several uh, very interesting solutions related to VR, um, related to uh, medicine, uh, learning, uh, as well as some potential defense uh, applications, and technologies, of course, uh, related to minimization of process and process automation. An average uh, cost or an average uh, investment related to each of these projects amounted to close to 10 million Polish slots. It's hard to say if uh, uh, this is a lot or if this is very little, uh, but that's an average, including also uh, investments and, and uh, development of uh, applications, uh, simple applications for user friendly for uh, phones and, and, and such uh, uh, consumer uh, goods. Therefore, um, numerous projects were above that uh, figure, which uh, shows that the level of involvement of technology, scientists, and, and uh, uh, sophistication was significant. The three, uh, the three um, um, main areas of, uh, of investment um, analyzed by us showed um, significant returns on investment. And of course, uh, those figures are very attractive. If anyone uh, runs a business, uh, uh, then anyone should be pretty much interested in uh, digitizing their business. This is interesting from the point of view of, of, of also information that in Poland, um, some of the enterprises, especially those small ones, are not yet keen on investing in digitization. Um, there is a, there's a significant number of family-owned businesses and small businesses which are not really following up on uh, on investment in uh, digitization. Maybe this is only a question of of uh, uh, of uh, uh, volume uh, that business uh, given business is actually uh, running within its operations. But uh, the the return on investment showing in our projects, which were tested, shows that this is a very good, a very much justified investment. Simple data or simple uh, sample data on uh, what the industries were uh, mostly benefiting from projects uh, which were financed by National Center for, uh, for Research and Development. Uh, those are mostly um, know-how heavy industries and the returns on investment uh, within those industries were very uh, attractive. Uh, that's probably not only, but it's probably because of the volumes which those industries, industries produce. Uh, thus, any investment which is actually Im implemented um, gives uh, significant returns. And this should be noted, of course, that uh, the data pertains to projects which were financed and uh, successfully completed. Uh, therefore, this data pertains only to those uh, products which were uh, successfully completed. And as a, as a kind of a constitution or a nature of the business uh, which we finance uh, innovation, there are businesses and or projects which fail. But that's a natural thing which our agency takes into consideration when uh, we make a decision to support financially given in innovation. Some general data about Central European uh, region. Within the period uh, of uh, five or six years, based on McKinsey, uh, uh, analysis, uh, we know that uh, um, the growth of uh, digital area or digital business uh, in uh, uh, Central and Eastern Europe grew 
over 24 percent uh, uh, over this period of time. Poland uh, um, grew also within that tape uh, within that tempo, but 24 percent of the growth is also coming from Poland. Poland has um, I understand seventh position in terms of uh, number of uh, scientists working uh, on uh, uh, new technologies related to digital. Uh, we're number one uh, in terms of uh, uh, number of scientists uh, working on, on digital economy within Central European uh, uh, area. So in many ways, we seem to be very much well uh, destined to become a hub for numerous technologies in, 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 uh, of this type in, uh, in the Central European region. Not only because, uh, of course, we have scientists which uh, have know-how to uh, which can be transferred to business and it becomes more and more often uh, the case, but also because we have uh, the basic market, uh, the size of Polish market seems attractive for uh, initial implementation of these solutions. Thus, uh, in many ways, uh, uh, the future for Poland seems very attractive and we, we may be and we, th we think we will be attractive uh, place for placing business within the digital economy in, in the near future. The question, the question is how uh, can we make Poland more attractive and how can we increase the cooperation between Polish scientists and Polish business in the future? Um, kind of a historical note, if you look at uh, Polish transformation, um, 10, 15 years ago, cooperation between Polish science uh, and Polish business was very limited. Uh, Polish business was very much inclined to, uh, to purchase plug and play solutions. Uh, simple solutions. Uh, that's not only because it was simple, but also because uh, Poland was slacking behind in a lot of uh, simplest things in, in many ways. Now, uh, Polish businesses are discovering or actually noticing, not necessarily discovering, noticing and seeing um, uh, innovation of their own as an opportunity to not only uh, conquer Polish market, but also conquer uh, European and, and world market. In my personal experience, uh, talking to some of the youngest even uh, inventors, uh, innovators, uh, when they uh, start uh, their startups, they think about Polish market as a, as a stepstone or um, a certain stage of development of their product. They do think uh, of uh, conquering Europe immediately. It's almost a natural um, direction for them. Uh, and of course, uh, conquering the uh, world is, is just the next step. Um, on the other hand, of course, you have Polish business, which is uh, oftentimes qualified as small and medium business, which thinks or considers that Poland is of a, a significant large uh, market for them to actually be comfortable with the size of the business which they run today. Um, one of the dilemmas that we have uh, working on our new strategy, we, we have developed a new strategy uh, uh, within uh, NCBR last, last year, uh, but we want to precise it, make it uh, more precise in terms of what kind of programs we want to create, is how Poland should develop, what businesses uh, should be supported, what technologies we should focus on to direct uh, the 8 billion Pol uh, euros which are uh, allocated for Poland for next perspective in the most efficient way. The question of whether or not we should invest and we should produce everything. Uh, sh should we concentrate on something? Should be should we, as Poland, as Polish entrepreneurs, uh, have a competitive advantage in something, uh, or should we uh, try to do everything of our own on our own? Those are some of the questions and issues we would like. To, I'd like to uh, discuss, and of course, uh, short pitch uh, publications of NCBR. Uh, according to our new strategy, uh, we would like to, and we will be uh, providing uh, Polish public institutions and Polish business with. Uh, statistical data based on uh, what we financed in past years to give a better view on what uh, potential Polish market has, uh, what uh, uh, technologies and what uh, areas of the market Polish business is seeing as their, um, as their um, uh, future in conquering markets. Because at the end of the day, it's the business that knows better uh, uh, outside of some of the critical uh, or um, critical technology which uh, public sector should support, like uh, uh, development of artificial intelligence, not only because we want to uh, uh, develop artificial intelligence in Poland and, and be a player in this uh, market, but also as a public institutions, we need to know <laughs> how that works uh, related to cyber uh, threats and all, all other things. 
So I have, uh, uh, I have a pleasure to have uh, uh, expert guests uh, on, my, on our panel. Uh, I have to apologize to all of the experts uh, cautiously decided not to show up. Uh, they, they, had, they informed us that they had uh, contact with someone who had COVID. Uh, cautiously, they decided not to come. So um, they apologize, and, uh, um, but I think we will we'll do fine. So with me is uh, Isabella Banasz, Deputy Director for Polish Agency for Enterprise Development. Good afternoon, it's nice to be here. Marcin Kraszka, Deputy Director of uh, Łukasiewicz Network for Research and Development. Uh, Kraszka. Kraszka. Uh, uh, good afternoon. Uh, David Solak, um, member of the board of Future Industry Platform. Good afternoon. And Roman Szwed, uh, Chairman of the Supervisor Board of Attend SA, one of the Polish uh, ICT champions. Good afternoon. So if I may, the first question to all of you, uh, so you may uh, 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 choose whoever wants to start. Should Poland uh, uh, invest in everything? Should Poland uh, and Polish business uh, be supported uh, in any area of digital economy? Should we have any areas of expertise or specialization? Uh, should we have any, any, any area which you think today we have a potential for competitive advantage? Roman, yes, you run the business. Uh, okay, so um, um, you see, <clears throat> of course, one uh, has to concentrate because if you uh, use money in such way that you distribute it just equally for everything, it will not work. But uh, I have such saying that you know, if you if you improve everything, little bit, you know, uh, everywhere. Uh, the result is also good. So, so one should balance, yes? So we should not forget, we should not concentrate on one or two branches and, uh, and only develop this. We should try to, uh, to uh, keep going with everything, but of course we should select these few, uh, few uh, branches, few industries and, and, um, uh, and, we'll, and, and should try uh, to uh, develop it uh, uh, faster and but but before let's say uh, coming to this i would like to make some uh, comment that you know we, we usually we see uh, uh, such industry and uh, good uh, success uh, uh, of of industry uh, as uh, as to produce something big something you know some uh, some big uh, um, uh, products uh, products which are heavy which are um, uh, let's say uh, um, can consume a, a lot of money etc but you know if you if you if you, because i'm representing it industry if you look uh, which uh, companies in the world are the uh, um, um, uh, biggest and they have the biggest capitalization if you look now you see that that those uh, largest companies, the biggest companies like Apple, like Facebook, like Google, like well, Amazon, they do not uh, produce uh, big and heavy things, yes? In, in, in uh, simplify the, the subject. They sell their uh, intellectual property and services, yes? So we should not only uh, remember that, that uh, it's not so easy to, uh, to choose this one ideal a subject or one ideal branch and develop this one, but we should also uh, remember that, the, um, that there is a, a phase transition. It's not any more product, big, heavy, and uh, capital uh, con uh, consuming, but maybe services. And I think uh, a very good example for, for this is, um, I think, transportation industry, uh, where Poland is a uh, leader in Europe, yes? And, uh, um, but uh, coming back to, um, to, to, to NCBR, but because NCBR is going to support and is going to uh, distribute money and must uh, uh, know how to do it in the best way, yes? So of course we can uh, select number of uh, uh, industries and I, I hope, <laughs> I am first, but, but I hope that uh, my colleagues will, will do it. But I would, I would stress that uh, I would, um, support very much IT industry because, because we, we are really in very good position. We have uh, good education, we have um, uh, results uh, in, in many already 
branches like, like let's say games yes start, suddenly poland started to be a maybe not leader yet but almost yes and uh, and, and gaining a lot of money uh, uh, and the position so and uh, we have uh, if if we concentrate on it and this is in uh, how to say what uh, ncbr is doing because ncbr is uh, supporting let's say education by giving money for let's say supercomputer centers let me mention this but of course in many other aspects and uh, and so 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 supporting education and later on one has to have uh, startups and of course ncbr is supporting startups yes one can do this only even better than now <laughs> As, as I said, is everything one, one we should do slightly better, try to do slightly better. But what is very important that there is next step when you have this such startup and uh, with some product, uh, usually if there is not internal market developed, um, uh, these products cannot be checked uh, on internal market and very it's very difficult to go for the global market. And I think this I would uh, see as a field where NCBR can help. How to do this that, that in our internal market is uh, supporting, let's say, artificial intelligence. If, if, if uh, there will be programs um, for those uh, uh, customers, customers, or not, not those who, who, who deliver these, these, let's say, services and products, but who wants uh, to, let's say, to improve their um, companies, let's say, um, in such way that they have elements of uh, artificial intelligence and money for this, there will be companies providing this, yes, because they will have money for it. And if you have such internal market and develop this internal market, the next step is a global market and uh, we will be very successful. Well, of course, uh, I don't want to limit um, uh, this uh, uh, chosen, uh, let's say, uh, um, uh, businesses like like uh, business like uh, IT uh, industry, but but I think we should really concentrate on it. I see. So um, the question, the 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 same question to uh, Mr. Solak. You represent a platform which uh, uh, has membership of several institutions, actually businesses. So you have a view of uh, of what uh, seems to be an interest or a focus areas. Of, of your members of your organization. Can you elaborate on the same point? Uh, well, I have uh, two perspectives on the uh, matter you asked. Uh, one of them is my, they both correspond pretty well with the NCBR report. And, well, the first one is my um, former professional uh, thought because uh, in my professional life, I used to be for a few years, a manager in the research and development center in one of the leading Polish chemical uh, companies. And I was responsible for implementing um, the digital technologies in our company. And uh, well, we were using many tools such as scale-ups, such as accelerators. And well, uh, there was no solution on uh, we wanted that we were unable to find on our domestic market. Uh, of course, uh, companies that are using uh, tools like I mentioned uh, are very often uh, looking for innovative services or products that will help them to make a revolution in the market and to become a leader. Uh, and it very often ends uh, with uh, improving some processes and uh, improving processes like perhaps uh, logistics, uh, transport, uh, training, uh, predictive maintenance, uh, or something like this. And I think that our domestic market is quite strong when it comes to the digital technologies. Uh, of course, it's, it depends on uh, the needs and uh, the uh, specify of the uh, company and uh, the firm. And this is one, this is my first thought and my first uh, perspective. And the second perspective is a perspective uh, from the future industry platform. Uh, and I think that this is a general thought. Well, I think that there are some branches like uh, perhaps uh, robotics where we don't have uh, strong domestic producers or service providers. Uh, and we shouldn't even think to uh, chase the leader and to have a 
domestic uh, producer as leader uh, because uh, it's just a waste of time. We should think about uh, stronger cooperation uh, and we should think about uh, filling the gaps on our domestic market. Excellent, thank you. Marcin Kraska, new institutes, newly created, maybe two and a half years ago, yet very agile. Uh, thousands of scientists, uh, business challenge, which you uh, uh, opened up, uh, very positive reviews. Your view, should we concentrate? Where do we have know-how? Uh, should we just go on with what we have now? Uh, okay, so uh, in Poland, we have very strong sectors, but uh, the problem is that uh, we are rather subcontractor, not innovator. And this is the, the, the main problem of, uh, of uh, Polish uh, economy, Polish uh, businesses. And uh, we are very strong in our automotive uh, uh, sectors. Uh, we are the, the major European manufacturer of automotive uh, components and spare, uh, spare parts uh, in Europe. So uh, we are the third producer of the hydrogen in Europe. Uh, uh, we are very strong in aviation and many, many uh, other sectors that we are very uh, big businesses, uh, but uh, a lot of competences, but we, we, we don't use it to be and to build uh, a leader position uh, in the Europe and uh, in, even in the, in the world. So uh, the problem is that in my op opinion, there is a lack of specialization in, in, in Poland. Uh, we invest a lot of money, but in, we invest this money in many projects. So we, we, we don't concentrate the investments on the specific uh, specialization to build uh, a leader position in Europe or in the world. And, uh, uh, and so we can't reach the, the, the the scale effect to build uh, this uh, this uh, position, and uh, uh, so as as a state, and uh, to use the 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 money from NCBR, uh, we should concentrate these investments to build the specialization and sectors uh, which uh, we are able to become a leader in Europe. Uh, it's not the investments uh, uh, in infrastructure but it's investments uh, in people and scientists and also investments to attract uh, uh, specialists, experts from different countries to come to Poland. And, uh, and uh, this is what the strongest economies uh, do. I give you two examples from, uh, uh, from uh, Germany. Uh, uh, they built a very high competence in uh, quantum computing. Uh, Fraunhofer got support from the government of 630 million of euro to build the competence in two years, only for two years, just to, to buy the, the, the quantum computer and to build the competences. Uh, and they, they cooperate with uh, IBM just to build these competences. With a such, such big amount of money, we, we can't, uh, we can't uh, compete with the Germany. And the second, uh, the second uh, example also from, from Germany, it's uh, concerning the hydrogen. And the Ministry of Economy announced that uh, the Germany will be the leader uh, in hydro hydrogen. And uh, they invest 8 billion, and uh, they, they will, uh, will invest 8 billion euro uh, in this uh, hydrogen sector, uh, and uh, this investments uh, 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 hopes to trigger investments, private investments of uh, 33 billions of euro. So uh, let's talk about the, the the big investments in Poland, uh, and not uh, 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 not fragmented investments, but very big. But we should define what as our specialization. We, we will not be a leader in everything. We should concentrate on, uh, on uh, specific uh, areas and really invest a lot of money to and, and uh, 
and to, to build the competences, to use the competences which, which, already, which are already in the market uh, and, uh, and different institutions and in businesses uh, and, uh, and, uh, uh, and to become a leader in uh, one of the area. So it, I think that we, we need this, uh, this uh, activities and uh, to, uh, to define this, uh, this position. So that's, that's, that follows exactly uh, the question, uh, because we seem to be doing well, but it's all relative. And maybe uh, it's only we're doing well, but just well, not well enough. The potential is there. The question, uh, how to focus uh, the resources that we have, because they're not unlimited. And uh, can we come up with uh, something of a national strategy uh, that will support uh, selected, uh, selected industries? Now, Isabella, mid and small cap. Connecting to your uh, first question, uh, as economists, I wouldn't like to uh, tell about economy, uh, mm -hmm. sorry, about technologies, but uh, uh, if I comment uh, in the context of digitalization, the technology seems secondary for me. I totally agree with you uh, that uh, the people are the most important, the knowledge and the competences. Uh, we are in the moment of the world when uh, the whole world is struggling of lack of experts and in Poland we have quite good level of uh, education, technical education. Of course, there is a lot of things to improve, but anyway, every year we educate quite high number of uh, IT specialists and engineers. And uh, if we are talking about uh, exporting and import, Definitely, we, we shouldn't export them. Definitely, yeah. What we have to focus on is just to create good work, life, business condition uh, to make our market more and more attractive, not only for the uh, young professionals from Poland, young and old, doesn't matter, but uh, also for, from um, creative people from the whole world. And this is what we try to do in Polish Agency for Enterprise Development, in our acceleration program, and also in our uh, program focused on foreigners like Poland Prize. And I have to admit that uh, the first results are, are, are quite promising. Uh, in our pilot programs, uh, uh, more than 100 uh, new uh, SMEs established, but for, uh, was established, but uh, by foreigners from the whole world. And in our current programs, we are expecting uh, even 400 more. Uh, so, answering on your question, definitely. We should import people, their knowledge, and then the technology will come with them. The question is how to make uh, SMEs uh, invest in digital, how to make them interested in uh, developing their business into something bigger than SME, uh, how to make uh, those places an attractive place to work for our scientists and work with our scientists. And uh, in your experience, in your programs, uh, do you foresee uh, any of the type of uh, programs in the future? Do you see a need for that kind of support? Um, how do you see that in the future from the next uh, European perspective? Uh, if we talk about startups, of course, we have to think about acceleration program uh, programs. So uh, we have to remember about advisory services, about financing. But uh, what do we see? It's the most important for our clients uh, in um, the startup uh, ecosystem, it's to connect them with the clients. So what we do in our programs, we connect the uh, startups with big companies, with uh, the first client uh, that is able to help them to develop the product and, uh, and show this on the so the, the, the basic thing, which the business, the startup really needs is the first client, the first cash flow, uh, the first ability, ability to uh, to check the mark with the market what the result of their uh, of their innovation is. Yeah, I think so. So again, Marcin, there is there's this question of uh, co collaboration of, of scientists with uh, with business. Uh, Polish uh, experience in such that uh, it was very limited. It's improving. 
Uh, again, uh, your institution has created a special program, a challenge where a business can turn to your institution, to your scientists with a question, and you come back with a, a proposal of a resolution within two weeks, very agile. Uh, you have hundreds of projects like that already run. Can you elaborate how you see existing way of collaborating between scientists and business in Poland? And how can we improve this? Because that's, that's if we actually do have these areas of expertise that we determine we want to do, then this collaboration of those very two different worlds, uh, which does take place in other countries, should be somehow strengthened, improved, supported. Uh, okay, so uh, maybe some uh, some words about the Łukasiewicz. Uh, uh, Łukasiewicz Research Network. It's very young organization because we had we have only uh, uh, two and a half years old. Uh, we are uh, two, two and a half years old, but uh, it's it's built uh, uh, with the very experienced institutions, institutes, research institutes, and now in the, in the in the network we have uh, 32 institutes uh, with the very very uh, wide range of uh, competences, and uh, from the beginning of uh, of Łukasiewicz. Uh, we concentrated uh, very strongly uh, on cooperation with the business because uh, we uh, we want we don't want to cooperate. We want to make a business with the business. So this is uh, this is our aim, and uh, that's that's why uh, that's why we analyzed uh, the the problems uh, in cooperation and making the business with the business. And uh, the the first thing what uh, uh, what before Lukashevich uh, uh, what is was the the problem? It's uh, finding the the competent uh, scientists and the competent uh, uh, institutions uh, which can uh, help in uh, in solving the problem of the businesses. Uh, before Łukasiewicz, we had uh, 38 because we, we started with the 38 institutes. So business should find the competent scientists in this 38 institutes. So uh, uh, our idea was to create a single point of contact. Uh, the, the business don't uh, the businesses uh, don't care about where is the scientist. It's our role to find the, the competent uh, team and to create uh, the, the answer for, uh, for challenge uh, which uh, the business defined uh, for us. So it was the, the basic, basic thing. And uh, thanks to this assumption, we created the challenge system. It's, uh, it's of course, is supported by the IT. Uh, so, uh, so business, uh, uh, can send us the the challenge and and uh, the Łukasiewicz within 15 days give the uh, the the team the competent team and also the answer for this challenge uh, the initial answer of course uh, uh, but uh, uh, but it's uh, it's uh, uh, is the answer that uh, we showed that we are able to to solve uh, the the business uh, the business problems. Uh, so uh, till now uh, the we had the anniversary of uh, of launching that system. It's two years. It was two years ago, and till now uh, we had uh, one thousand challenges with over uh, four hundred uh, uh, companies for, in Poland. So it's. Uh, Quite big, uh, big, uh, big number of uh, of companies uh, which already uh, uh, cooperate uh, cooperate with Łukasiewicz. Uh, so uh, it's the 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 key things. Łukasiewicz uh, uh, has uh, uh, has uh, over four thousand of scientists. It's not possible to build such a competences in in businesses. And also very very wide range of infrastructure, research infrastructure, uh, which is not uh, possible to build in uh, the single in single company. So it is uh, the uh, it is the the uh, strength of Łukasiewicz in cooperation with uh, with the businesses. And 
and uh, I would like also to the touch the 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 the, uh, the international cooperation, the subject of international cooperation, because it's also very important uh, in research, uh, of course. Uh, so uh, to our aim, it's uh, increasing the cooperation because uh, the the biggest uh, uh, research proje projects uh, that are uh, with the different uh, partners, uh, not the only national but international. Mm -hmm. So uh, we want to to build the, the cooperation with uh, with uh, many institutions, international institutions, and that's why we created Center for Foresight and Internationalization. Uh, which the director is uh, one of the employees from VTT, uh, one of the research uh, network uh, in Europe, the biggest uh, uh, institutions uh, uh, in Horizon 2020. So we also attract people from uh, from abroad to come to Wakashevich to build the competences and to build the very strong uh, uh, um, uh, entirety in, in in Europe and further maybe in the world. So, um, kind of uh, science in the service of business, and that's uh, that's something that's absolutely critical uh, for development of a future Polish Polish future uh, in uh, new technologies. Um, it seems it may seem obvious to a lot of people that this is how it should be done. But please remember that in Poland we have a very short way of uh, short way. Actually, we have very, <laughs> we have only a few years to uh, uh, to prepare ourselves to this new uh, free market economy. Uh, several uh, tradition the tradition of working between science and, and business in Poland is, is relatively new, considering uh, that the transformation that uh, that happened in nineteen towards the end of nineteen eighties. Uh, that's why this is in in many ways uh, very critical for us. To uh, uh, to foster this this type of uh, cooperation. Now the question uh, to Mr. Solak and to Roman, uh, if uh, if you could, there's a there's a question of whether or not business likes to work with scientists. Uh, a lot of businessmen will tell you that uh, managers will tell you that uh, uh, cooperation with scientists is difficult. How does that how does that um, look from your point of view your your members of your uh, of your organization do they see future in working with polish scientists and polish institutions like Łukasiewicz, for example uh would you consider or would you suggest some changes in the way this cooperation is being done today i'm sure there's plenty of, of such suggestions how can we change our institutions to uh, to make your life better um, well, well, I think that uh, as a country we are doing more and more to uh, make the cooperation between the business and between science um, uh, better, more effective uh, and easier. There is also more and more tools, even the financial tools that are, that are helping to transfer uh, technologies uh, from the world of science to the world of business. Uh, I have a lot uh, to do with uh, both with science and with business in my professional uh, life in my past. Well, uh, I think that uh, one very important thing is to uh, work on awareness, on awareness um, uh, in the world of science and in the world of, the, of business. We should convince uh, uh, like the research institutes and uh, and, and people from the higher higher scholarship that um, they should um, pull their um, innovative products and uh, services to the market faster and faster. Uh, and we also need to work on awareness of business that it's worth that it's worth to uh, invest in the digital technologies in innovations. Um, uh, these are two uh, quite important. Uh, these are two quite important tasks. Well, well, the Future Industry Platform is a national agency that is responsible for working on awareness of our entrepreneurs. That it is worth to adapt the cyber and digital technologies uh, in uh, in their business. 
uh, and this is uh, uh, one of our this is one of our main tasks that we are doing um, in our daily work is an institution well my predecessor says that his institution is quite young because it has two and half of year the future industry platform is even younger because <laughs> we have only uh, because right now we have only uh, only two years uh, and it's uh, uh, great uh, work before us and road uh, uh, and road to uh, and road to make so i understand we can count on you helping us in in uh, preparing future programs that can support your members uh in this yes exactly okay roman you uh you've developed uh, a company from start well i think uh, <clears throat> you see it, it it is difficult to to uh, to cooperate between the science and uh, business but uh, not in all uh, areas let's say if we speak about um uh, using knowledge just you know the, uh, inviting people from science to to help in solving certain uh, business uh, problems which which emerge it's okay so because uh, and i think this is uh, number one i mean what is going in poland that a lot of uh, uh, small groups maybe and 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 uh, even not small but are involved in some projects and and they just help to understand to solve some problems but this is not the same to do business together yes so do, doing business together uh, is almost uh, I would say impossible, but not because people don't want, but because we have such um, a legal structure, we have such law. It's very difficult um, uh, to do uh, to because it's government. This is private, and you, you never know uh, uh, this um, intellectual property to whom it will belong at the end. Well, I can mention a lot of uh, cases, but it's it's so difficult that 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 uh, I think business is not going to do it because um, it, it will have problems later on, yes? And I think also from the scientific uh, uh, side, it's the same. I mean, if it, it, it's much easier to get money and let's say 100% uh, um, um, funds for, 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 for this, what, what I do, than, than to go together with some uh, let's say business and get only 40 percent or, or you know have some problems with it so i think uh, we have a, a real uh, obstacle in in our uh, just legal structure how to how to really cooperate but this doesn't mean that we do not cooperate we cooperate yes but but on different way on different way and i think uh, mm, we have a lot of uh, nice examples cooperation with let's say Warsaw uh technical university was or so uni university you know it's, it's not that we do not cooperate yes and and they are very very useful uh helping us to, to solve certain problems and we also try to let's say ask them to re even promote certain our solutions like uh, uh, teach uh, their students something which is really uh, needed for us but not only for us you know it's for uh, any business in poland uh, later on so a lot of aspects of this cooperation is 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 going okay but not everything <laughs> yeah because because we have such such legal uh, structure and we cannot uh, just forget about this i have a feeling that marching has a proposal to you <laughs> yes uh, uh, you know we 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 try to 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 change the mentality of our scientist because uh, before uh the scientist uh, didn't listen to the business and uh, and in Lukashevich we prefer projects with the businesses not only taking the money uh, from NCBR for example for research uh, research projects but to do uh, the project with the real business because uh, the, the business uh, uh, they 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 are able to define what is needed by the market and uh, and i think that uh, we we spent too much money just for research and uh, so so that's that's why we uh, we we uh, we say that uh, we pref we prefer uh, uh, doing business with business not uh, cooperation 
uh, because, uh, for example, in uh, in research institutes, uh, there uh, we create also the new technologies, and this technology could be uh, commercialized uh, with the business, and uh, we want to create the technologies which are uh, needed by the business by the market so we are very very business oriented in uh, uh, in our activity and uh, this is our our role it's uh, it's doing uh, the interesting thing which are which are uh, uh, needed by the market and this is our goal and the, and our uh, our direction of uh, of developing the scientists uh, and developing the activities uh, uh, so very very uh, concentrated on the, the the business i think the two of you should meet uh, offline uh, and your ceo um question to isabella um, there seems to be a, a certain conviction in, um, among smes uh, uh, that um, um the technologies the high technologies are a domain of of large international companies like microsoft uh and google and then of course there's this uh, uh startup world where people are high tech and tech crazy almost and that's uh, the small and, and and medium business is somewhere in the middle not necessarily most proficient in this uh, in this area uh, the, the question is, how do you see, do you see a, a potential for Polish uh, SME business, uh, small and medium business uh, in digitalization and increasing uh, capacities and, and conquering the world? Yes, of course, we see the potential. Uh, the, the situation is not very clear because on the one hand, we, uh, when we implement uh, activities, uh, uh, when we support the uh, SME in the digitalization or in the uh, transformation for uh, industry for zero towards industry for zero, we see a really great uh, interest. Uh, it's uh, enough to say that uh, in our last uh, project, uh, innovation, uh, sorry, digitalization voucher, we uh, received more than 6,000 application from SMEs that wanted to digitalize, digitalize uh, their processes. So it's, it's a really great number and we see really big interest in the companies. But on the other hand, uh, some studies, uh, even the World Bank research done together with uh, PARP shows us that almost 50% of uh, small and medium enterprises uh, doesn't think about any digitalization because they think that it's something not for them. It's something for big company. Uh, and this is really something that worries us. And, uh, and we think that it's uh, definitely it's lesson to do. Uh, uh, it's lesson to learn and uh, it's a lot to do for all of us, for all the institutions. Looking at the return, rates of return on investment, which uh, we uh, found in our sample population projects, uh, I think anyone reasonably should expect that uh, this interest should be supported also by uh, by the effect which uh, the digitalization brings into the business. Just we're starting to come to to an end. I have one more question to, to Mr. Solak. Um, we uh, the pandemic, pandemia, COVID pandemia has two effects. Of course, the the nightmare of 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 being here. But also, it stirred an increased interest in uh, digital solutions by the by the participants, but by the actual consumers. Uh, the market, digital market, is um, um, booming because uh, suddenly the those of us, including myself, who didn't look for some uh, digital solutions in in the past, now found that there are solutions already existing which help in simple things, courts, uh, shopping, other things. But there is also uh, this other way, uh, this other side of of, uh, of this uh, uh, acceleration. Uh, we uh, we do not meet as often at work. We do not um, work as teams as much. Um, there are some negative aspects of 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 what we are experiencing right now, and this digital world which we are living in uh, has it's not all positive. Would you elaborate on your experience in uh, in this area and your uh, membership companies? 
Uh, well, I quite I agree what in uh, with uh, in this what you have said. Well, the uh, COVID pandemic uh, pandemia has uh, shown us that uh, uh, companies uh, and teams that are using uh, digital technologies are more resistant to the effects of um, uh, of COVID, and uh, it is also strictly connected with this what um, uh, Ms. Isabella Ban Banash has said about um, awareness of our SMEs, which uh, a lot of them thinks that the digital technologies are not for them. And I think that uh, COVID shown us that uh, the digital technologies are for everyone, because I think that uh, uh, almost every report and every research about um, about the results and about the impact of COVID pandemic on our economy shows that the companies that used the, um, digital technologies uh, dealt with the uh, results of the pandemic uh, better and better. And uh, I think uh, I very often say one thing at a lot of uh, conferences and in interviews that Luckily, we as a country live in times where the money is not the biggest problem. Well, we have more and more uh, of financial tools. Well, I'm not the proper person to say about them, but I think that also uh, Ms. Isa Mrs. Isabella Banash is the proper person to say it, perhaps about it, what the uh, PARP is doing for uh, entrepreneurs and what we will have in Poland in the next perspective. Um, but uh, there are there are uh, these are European tools founded by the European Commission. There are there are also uh, our national tools like the tax relief, perhaps uh, for uh, uh, for robotization. And still, uh, the most important thing uh, for us uh, as a country, and also for the people who are sitting here tonight, here right now, because uh, we are all participants of. Uh, one of the most important things in transforming our economy, I mean the ecosystem, because we are all trying to create the entire ecosystem that will help us to um, convince and to help the entrepreneurs and uh, our citizens to, uh, to transform uh, uh, to transform and to go um, and to go digital. Uh, the most important thing for us is still to uh, work on uh, to work on awareness, to uh, convince uh, our entrepreneurs, to convince the citizens, and to also to convince the officials that uh, uh, digital, digital transformation is one of the biggest challenges we need to face um, uh, also as a country. But this matter has uh, also uh, other sides. So one of the biggest uh, tasks for us is uh, to raise the awareness level. And the second is to create friendly regulations that will help uh, our entrepreneurs, our also public in institutions to transform and to go digital. Well, thank you. Uh, our time is ending. So maybe I'll just a couple of words uh, towards uh, at the end. Uh, it's It seems obvious from uh, what was said here that it is a lot better to be good at few things than be mediocre at a lot of things. And uh, in Poland, we have an opportunity, resources, and know-how to actually be very good at some things. We just need to determine what those things are with uh, some level of uh, probability and certainty, which is also not an easy thing. But uh, we do have scientists that can help us uh, to determine it. We need to increase a collaboration between uh, our scientists and business, because uh, I also, I personally met a lot of scientists who want to cooperate with, uh, with business. Um, they need a little bit of help, thus accelerators and, and help that we uh, can provide uh, as public institutions to, to provide this ecosystem for scientists to feel comfortable working for business uh, and with business. And of course, uh, the question of uh, uh, digitalization of, of, the, of the society, um, that's... Uh, <laughs> It seems obvious that everyone should, that this is something that we should do uh, because this is the only way to go into the future, especially um, 
facing threats such as pandemia, without digitization, we would be in a very bad position right now, not only as Poland, but, but also in the world, things would simply stop. But we also have to remember that a significant part of the world is uh, not digitized, not connected. And uh, we also have people here in Poland who are not connected, not because there's no network, because they just don't want to be. They don't see the reason why. Uh, thank you uh, for your participation. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much.